legislation. Democratic members of the House staged a 26-hour sit-in on the chamber floor Wednesday and into Thursday. The protest was broadcast over social media after C-SPAN cameras were shut down. The Democrats did not get their vote before the House recessed, but sit-in leader and civil rights icon Congressman John Lewis said they will not be deterred. When we come back here on July the 5th, we're going to continue to push to pull, to stand up, and if necessary, to sit down. Let's bring in New York Democrat Congressman Gregory Meeks. And with a welcome to you, we saw you right there in the midst of things. You were standing right behind Representative John Lewis as that whole thing got underway. Tell me what you achieved. Well, I think that the message is clear that there will not be business as usual. Uh, that we must have a vote on uh, gun, you know, have, making sure that if you're on a no-fly list, that uh, you can't buy a gun. We want that vote, as well as closing the gun show uh, loophole and buying a gun over the Internet. And that you can't silence our voices, that we're not going to allow the uh, NRA, uh, a small segment of the United States population, to uh, stymie the voices of over 90 percent of Americans, both Democrats and Republicans, who want these bills voted on. Re uh, Representative Meeks, where does that disconnect come? I mean, you're, you're stating correctly, 80 percent of Americans want something to be done. How is it that it doesn't translate to the floor of Congress? Well, you have to ask the Republican leadership of that, and that's the frustration that uh, we had and why, you know, this was an unprecedented moment and why almost, you know, this was not something that was engineered by our leadership or anything of that nature. It was a moral imperative led by John Lewis, who said that if we're going to get in trouble, we've got to get into some good trouble. Let's hit the floors. And I, and I hit the floor and stay there. And I think that what we're doing now is taking our message, since the Republicans left out in the middle of the night, taking our message to the American people uh, throughout our districts, both Democrat and Republican. It should be clear that the bill that we want to pass is a bipartisan bill. It's a Peter King is a sponsor of the bill. Hmm. And so um, we want to take it out throughout America uh, the week that we're not in D.C. Uh, and then when we get back, as John Lewis said, if we don't get a vote, you'll still see us do some things that uh, are necessary to try to make sure there's a vote on the House floor. Well, not surprisingly, Speaker Paul Ryan was critical of the Democrats in your action there. Here's what he had to say. This is nothing more than a publicity stunt. That's point number one. Point number two is this bill was already defeated in the United States Senate. Uh, number three, we're not going to take away a citizen's due process rights. We're not going to take away a citizen's constitutional rights without due process. Uh, that was already defeated in the Senate, and this is not a way to try and bring up legislation. So Speaker Ryan went on to say he was concerned about the precedent that this action sets in terms of due process. Does he have a point? Does it disrupt the procedures of the House? And does it raise obstacles to the entire legislative process? It does not. Uh, number one, let me just say first, to call this a stunt, except John Lewis doesn't have time for stunts. John Lewis uh, is a man of moral uh, uh, and he understands, you know, a lot of individuals when he was uh, going over to Edmund Pettus Bridge, etc., said that he shouldn't have done what he did then because it broke with what tradition was, etc. Well, as he said, sometimes you have to break with what tradition is to do what is right for the people. And that's what he did here. So to say that doesn't make sense to me. Number two, at least on the Senate side, they had a vote and a debate on the issues. Uh, what the speaker is doing here is styming the, the uh, debate and vote so that the American people will know where everybody stands. And so, that, that is what Congressman Lewis, uh, yourself and others said repeatedly. We just want a vote. So 10 days from now, July 5th, when the House is back in session, what makes you think you'll be successful? Well, I think that you're going to see an extraordinary amount of American people putting pressure 
on the speaker and others. And we urge them to continue to call the speaker and to call and reach out to their representatives, no matter they be Democrats or Republican, to make sure that they know what their feelings are. I think you'll see an enormous amount of people come July 5th when we're back in Washington, D.C., coming to the steps of the Capitol saying that we want a vote. And I think that the voices of the people then will have to be heard. Uh, you still see debate taking place on the Senate side. Why in the people's house, which is supposed to be the House of Representatives, we are not having a debate on issues that are most important to all of the people of the United States. Hmm. So I think that our movement forward with the support of the people behind us, and again, Democrats and Republicans on this issue uh, from the people will compel. Uh, and we'll have to do what we have to do and, and strategize, as, as, as uh, John Lewis has indicated, on what our next steps are and yeah. what we do. Representative Meeks, I do want to ask you a question about the Brexit vote. Uh, I know you sit on both the financial services as well as the Foreign Affairs Committee. So I'm curious if you see any concerns concern with the withdrawal of the EU affecting jobs and economic growth here in the U.S.? Yeah, I'm very concerned. You know, I'm the, the uh, ranking Democrat on the European uh, subcommittee on the Foreign Affairs Committee. And so I've been following this very closely, by the way, closer than the Republican presidential uh, nominee. Uh, but uh, at any rate, this is, you know, we're in uncharted waters, and it's very worrisome. Uh, elections do have consequences. Uh, and so what will take place here? You know, you see, uh, I immediately uh, related it to uh, the scenario that I had on the floor when uh, we had to deal with the banks in our, in our country. Uh, fortunately, we had a vote, and we were able to save it so that we didn't lose more jobs and the stock market didn't go crazy, et cetera. But you see what's happening economically now. We're in uncharted waters. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know, but I hear companies thinking about moving, and it's going to have a direct effect on their economy. You saw the value of the pound go down to record lows. Uh, so it's, uh, it's uncertain times. New York Democrat Representative